Sam had prepared for the session with Mistress and exactly as she had ordered. He had never met her, except on the internet, and this was to be his first session with her. Sam had some experience with Band D, but not a lot. He wanted a total immersion experience, and this contact seemed to be what he was seeking. He had flown into San Francisco from his home in Omaha and checked into a nameless small motel near the airport. From there he had taken a cab to an area known as Daly City. He had the driver drop him off at a street corner in a retail district. He proceeded to walk to the address he had been given and soon found it to be a row house like so many others in the city. He knocked on the door and was admitted to a foyer where he handed over the letter of introduction from Mistress N and Cash in the amount of $2,000. He was taken to a room where he undressed and was ordered to lie down on a table. Leather cuffs secured his arms and legs and then a team of laser specialists went to work on him. They used local anesthetics and took turns treating him, changing technicians every hour. For two days they worked on him, usually two at a time although sometimes there were three. When they were through he was essentially hairless, from head to toe. He was then covered with nair and allowed to shower after twenty minutes. This was done twice. Finally, they rubbed some kind of lotion into his skin to soothe it. When he saw himself in a mirror he found a completely bare-skinned man looking back him. He was bald, his eyebrows were gone, he had no body hair and even his groin was bare. It was incredible. They allowed him to put on his clothes but they kept his wallet and all of the other contents from his pockets. He was given what he was told was enough cash to pay a cab fare plus tip the driver to take him to his next address. This time he found himself at a small warehouse in an industrial district. When he approached the door, it opened and he was beckoned inside. The first thing he saw was a black pedestal on which sat a pair of shoes that made his heart leap and his cock come to attention in his pants. They were pink pumps but they were like no shoes he had ever seen before. Even in his fantasies he had never conceived anything as exciting as these creations. Shiny pink patent, they had scalloped edges from the toe box up around the top of the heel. The toes were extremely pointed, a two-inch platform sat under the sole and a wide pink bow graced the toe. Golden spike heels gleamed in the spotlight which shone down on them. The heels had to be at least eight inches high and narrow as a pencil. Halfway up the heel was another large pink bow. Sissy shoes indeed. The only things missing were ankle straps and locks for the buckles. Mistress and stood next to them and she seemed to read his mind. A real sissy does not need to be locked into his sissy shoes, she said. He wears them because he wants to. Because he needs to. Because he loves to. Because he just has to. Mistress and was a lovely creature indeed. She commanded respect but she was actually dressed rather demurely. She wore a white blouse, knee-length black skirt, suntan stockings and black pumps with heels about three inches high. Even so he felt the strength emanating from her and he wanted to fall to his knees and worship her. He did not only because he somehow sensed that she did not want that. Would you like to wear these shoes? She asked, somewhat seductively. When he nodded his head she frowned. He thought for a moment and then replied, Yes, mistress. I would give anything to wear those shoes. Any sissy would just die to wear them. She just smiled and then said one word. Naked. He immediately stripped his clothes off, throwing them into a bin she pointed to. Slowly she walked around him, examining her prize. Clearly, she was happy as she said, I see they did an excellent job at the salon. I'm sure you'll find it beneficial in the future. She handed him a bag of ice which he knew he was to hold against his crotch. He did so until his cock and balls had shrunk down to almost nothing. Mistress and put on a pair of rubber gloves before she took his testicles into her hands. She squeezed them until his balls had popped back up into his body cavity. 
She took hold of his shrunken cock and stretched it out as far as it would reach, pulled it back between his legs and wrapped his empty sacks around it. She slapped tape over it all to hold it in place. With some horror he realized she had used flesh-colored duct tape. Yes, she whispered. Taking that off will be something of a project. I suspect you will want to avoid it as long as possible. Her laughter was an evil cackle that told him she was enjoying herself. What came next would have produced an erection for certain if he was not so tucked away. Even so he nearly bent over in pain as he reacted to what he saw. It was a pink satin corset. She quickly wrapped it around his middle. Although it was shiny satin he realized it was very strong. Steel clasps in the front, heavy laces in the rear and many strong steel stays. He soon found out it was a wasp waist design with severely curved stays. She tightened the laces using a lacing aid. It took a lot of work and no small amount of breath control on his part to take his waist in nearly 10 inches. His normal 30-inch waist was now down to a mere 20. He could barely breathe when she finished. I know it is difficult now, but you will eventually adjust to it. Of course the first few days will be a form of torture, but that is the lot of a sissy. Days, he thought. This must be part of the psychological aspect of the session. He had only paid for one night and some kind of a promised party. He thought about clarifying things but was distracted when he realized she had not tied the laces in a bow. Instead she had tied a knot and using scissors she had cut off the excess lace. Now a pair of tight mesh pink fishnet stockings were drawn up his hairless legs. They were fastened to garters that hung down from the corset. Four garters on each leg. Over these came a pair of sissy panties. The panties were black satin and emphasized the flat crotch in front. The back was decorated with rows of pink ruffles that stretched across his ass cheeks. Of some worry was the open crotch, but things were moving too fast now for him to question her about anything. Besides, each step brought him closer to donning those entrancing sissy shoes. The pink satin maid's dress was so dreamy. Low cut to show off the cleavage the corset plus a set of silicone inserts had created, it rose up over his shoulders. Each sleeve came down halfway to the elbow. There it gripped his arm tightly creating a puff above the cuff. There were white lace flourishes everywhere and lots of pink roses too. When it was zipped up it hugged his now 38-20-32 figure tightly. The skirt was so short his garters showed no matter how he stood. Black and white petticoats that were part of the skirt held it so far out that his panties came into view if he moved in the slightest. She took him by the hand over to a chair and had him sit. He had to keep his knees tightly pressed together to maintain any sort of modesty. He was ordered to stay in place while one of her helpers put full-length acrylic nails on his fingers and painted them hot pink. Another one drew eyebrows on his face, glued long false lashes into place and swabbed on dark black mascara. Black, blue and violet eyeshadow soon gave him very dramatic eyes and the brightest red lipstick he had ever seen drew attention to his lips. A quick poke with a syringe had plumped them up with collagen before the color was applied. His recently pierced ears were soon sporting very large gold hoops. They were so large that they reached all the way to his shoulders. He could feel them every time he turned his head. In the center of each hoop was the word sissy in gold embossed with rhinestones. The slightest movement of his head caused them to sparkle in the light. Lace gloves that reached only to his wrists allowed his nails to show through and they ended in flared cuffs that could only be called prissy. They also hid the first sign of any restraints mistress and had put on him. Thin white cords circled his wrists and when they were pulled tight they seemed to lock into place with some kind of a friction catch. A small ring hung from each cord. Those cords are cotton-covered steel cables, she explained. As you will soon discover they are much stronger than they look. You will not be able to remove them except by cutting them and then only with strong bolt cutters. Around his narrow waist went some kind of a belt. It was pink to match the dress and it fastened in the back. 
The buckle tongue stuck straight out through the hole in the belt and had a hole in the middle. She placed the one and only lock he would wear through the hole and snapped it shut. On each side of the belt there was a small white ring, just like the ones on his wrists. In front there was a large oval plate with three lines of writing on it. He could see it, but since his cataract surgery, he could not read what it said without glasses. Mistress and then led him over to the shoes. Gently she put them down on the floor and taking his arm she helped him slip first one foot and then other into what could only be called a sissy wet dream of footwear. He had practiced for weeks at home walking in high heels but the platform and narrow heel took a while to adjust to. They were essentially six inches high and put him up on the balls of his feet. The narrow heel tip made balancing tricky and he knew he would have to pay attention to every step to avoid falling or twisting his ankle. After a few trips across the room he realized the only way to keep his balance was to swish and mince about as he walked. He was so busy admiring his shoes and learning to walk in them that he hardly noticed when she took a locking link and fastened each wrist to the ring on his waist belt. It was only after she was finished that he realized he was totally helpless. He was restrained although not obviously bound. He could only swish about in those heels with his hands fluttering at his waist. The final touch was the rhinestone-studded collar that fastened around his neck. Now he was clearly a sissy. It was only when Mistress and showed him the remote she held that he found out how much he was now hers. She gently pushed the button and he received a shock at his neck. The collar is a training collar, she explained. The longer I hold the button down the greater the shock and the greater the pain. If I hold it down for more than ten seconds you will pass out from the electric shock. With those words she walked across the room, opened the door and ordered him outside. Outside, he said. No, I cannot do that. Of course you can, she said. A push of the button on the remote soon convinced him that he certainly could. The next to the last step in your sissification is public exposure and humiliation. We are going to go for a little ride and then you are going to walk around Union Square. It will be very entertaining for all the tourists to see what a sissy you are. You will be quite the attraction and I'm sure you'll find yourself in lots of pictures, many of which will find their way onto the internet. He was mortified. In this outfit there was no doubt he was a sissy. Without even a wig there was no way anyone would fail to see that he was anything but a man dressed up in sissy fetish wear. He would be swishing along the sidewalk among the weekend crowds. He would be the center of attention. What if someone from his hometown happened to see him? Or what if some tourist's picture wound up on Facebook? What if one of his friends happened to see it? He would never live it down. It did not really matter what he thought, though. The cords held him helpless and the collar made him obedient. So it was that he soon found himself in the heart of the city, tripping along behind Mistress and as she window shopped her way around the square. The stairs, the finger pointing, the laughter, the constant picture taking was almost more than he could bear. At one point, a man stopped Mistress Anne. He could only stand and stare but he could hear their conversation. I see you have captured another one, the man said. Will he be at the party and auction tonight? Yes, she replied. I think this one will be a good investment. I'm sure he will earn a nice bit during the training party. I'll price him at $20 for a blow job, $20 to take him up the ass and $30. Zero zero to spit roast him. He should be able to average at least four or five men per hour and by two o'clock he should be well trained in his future duties. I'll bet I can get at least fifty thousand dollars for him at the auction. The man came closer and checked him out all around. Very clever, he said. You can barely tell he is restrained but he is certainly helpless. That is some sissy dress and the shoes are to just die for. And that plaque in front is just so perfect. Is that really his name? Mistress and smiled as she nodded. 
Yes, for the rest of his life he will be known as Sissy Samantha Sucks Cock.